Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to attempt to make Woots steel out of this high carbon W1 round bar. Okay, let me set the stage for what we're trying to do here a little bit so it all makes a little bit more sense. What is Woots steel? Woots steel is the original Damascus steel, quote unquote. It has a pattern to it, but it is a high carbon steel with a small amount of carbide forming alloy, such as vanadium, whereby you can get patterns with the carbides that form in the steel. This is different than the pattern welded Damascus steel of the modern era. Now you can't make a Damascus steel anything these days and put it online without somebody getting in the comments and saying, oh, that's not real Damascus steel. Well, they're sort of right, but also largely wrong. The Woots steel that was distributed and traded in Damascus came from various locations, such as Jordan, where you would have naturally occurring alloy components in the iron ore that was responsible for the resulting pattern of the steel if worked in a particular manner. This steel was melted in a crucible, so it's also known as crucible steel, and that's, again, different than the pattern welded billets that we make oftentimes today. But the fact of the matter is, language changes, and just as if you opened a 1611 version of the King James Bible, there are many words in there that you would not understand. And so, whether you like it or not, Damascus refers to pattern welded steel for the last several hundred years. But what we're trying to do here today is use an existing bar of steel, and with a little bit of knowledge of metallurgy, bring out a pattern just using that steel. So I've heated this piece of steel up to 1400 degrees for about 15 minutes, taking it out and let it cool. I'm gonna do this a couple more times at least. So what are we doing with these thermocycles? Well, every single piece of steel that you can buy has been forged from some sort of large ingot or large chunk. It's been forged down into the specific dimensions that you receive it in, whether it's eighth of an inch thick, quarter inch thick, or inch and an eighth or inch and a quarter round bar. That means that whatever characteristics are in that steel, whether they're impurities or alloy components or carbides, they are forged and they are affected by that forging process. That means a long piece of steel is going to have a linear characteristic to whatever is in that steel. So what I'm doing with these thermocycles is trying to grow whatever is already there. The way this works is that you're heating the steel up to a temperature that the carbon can move in the steel and carbon moves in steel. It's going to migrate toward existing carbides and make those carbides larger. And as I mentioned earlier, the carbides tend to form around carbide forming elements such as vanadium. Now W1 is a good candidate for this project because it is high carbon, it's over 1% or right close to that. And it has some uh, minor alloy components to it. And those help with different things and add uh, some good characteristics to the steel. But for our purposes here, they're carbide forming elements and we're going to make use of those. So what I want to do is take whatever existing properties or characteristics are in this steel and accentuate them. Now this is not always necessarily a good thing depending on what you're trying to do. If you've made knives and you've done thermocycles on them for grain refinement or whatever, you may have run into something called alloy banding. And this happens with uh, various different steels that have high carbon and some alloy component like 52100, 01, etc, etc. And you'll start to see lines in that blade alloy banding. Typically, I try to avoid that. All right, we have heated up and cooled down or thermocycled this billet three times. That should accentuate and grow whatever carbide formation or characteristics are already in this steel. Now what I'm gonna do is heat this up to a forging temperature, keeping it on the lower end if at all possible, and we're gonna twist this to try to create a pattern with what is hopefully in there. The reason this should work is that these carbides that have grown hopefully during these thermocycles do not immediately dissolve and go back into the matrix of the steel. It would take significantly higher temperatures at a longer period of time to dissolve those and make this steel completely homogenous again. So I'm hoping to preserve the carbide formation and use it to make a pattern.
I did run a normalizing cycle on this and at 1600 degrees again that should not dissolve our carbide formation at least not near anything close to complete dissolving and then I've uh, spheroidized it so in a kneeling cycle which should actually help continue to build that carbide structure but this is looking kind of hideous I tried a new forging technique and uh, maybe I should have not done that. Maybe I should have saved that for a different project because what we're trying to do here is make woots. And um, this is kind of terrible looking, but let's get it on the grinder and see if we can clean this up a little bit, make it a little more, a little less terrible. Alright, well I ended up abandoning any notion of a guard on this knife, it just wasn't going to work out. So we still have an integral bolster on here and it's looking a lot like a little kitchen knife, which will be cool too. But the main part of the project is to see if we can make woots. Anyway, back into the kiln for a final thermocycle. It'll get the, uh, the uh, structure into a pearlitic state. We've run two tempering cycles on this blade, so now we can finish grind it, hand sand it, and etch it to see if we have a pattern. We've gotta get up to a decently high finish before we can etch it to hopefully reveal any pattern. Okay, I have hand sanded this up to 1500 grit, at least the flats of the blade I'm getting a little bit impatient. I want to see if we have a pattern. So to finish this knife, I need to do some more sanding and things like that. But let's get this in the etch and see what we have. All right, the moment of revelation, as it were. Now, this is not going to be real Woots. And I'm sure some of you have already put that in the comments or, or thought about it. Real Woots, or crucible steel, is melted in, in a crucible, like I said, and the pattern is derived from dendrites. Dendrites are crystalline type structures that form as steel cools from a liquid state to a solid state. Not too dissimilar to the way water forms crystalline structures as it cools from a liquid to a solid state. As you might see on like a uh, when a thin layer of, of, of water or, or vapor freezes onto a window and you see the frost with the different patterns, or a snowflake is a great example of a crystalline structure that's got a specific pattern or shape to it. That's what dendrites are in steel, essentially. And through careful forging after the billet cooling from a liquid, you can maintain those dendrites and manipulate them into some kind of a pattern. But the similarity is that we're using carbides because that's how the dendrites form is with the uh, carbide structure in the steel. And uh, we're using carbide structure to create a pattern, hopefully. Okay, I am seeing something here. And I have to remember that this type of patterning is going to be much less bold and less apparent than what we're used to with the pattern welded Damascus. And there's also different polishing techniques that um, would probably really help to bring out this, uh, this grain or this pattern. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep um, taking it in and out of the ferric chloride and hitting it with the 1500 grit paper. And this is going to take a little bit of a process to, to pull this pattern out, I think. And then, and then hopefully I'll have something to show you guys. I switched out for a much weaker ferric chloride solution because we don't have that really big contrast in alloy component between the high carbon and the nickel content steel in this case. And so I feel like the, the stronger solution, which would normally be okay for pattern welded, was just taking off, taking this, all the steel down and not really giving us much of a distinction in the pattern. Well, the pattern is there, and it's, uh, it's developing, I guess you could say. 
I think it's going to take some more advanced polishing and etching techniques to really, really see the pattern or have it stay on the steel. I'll show some pictures here because this may or may not show up super good on the camera. Right here you can see where we have a portion that didn't actually harden fully. And that's not surprising because W1 is a very shallow hardening steel and you could use this to create a hamon if you wanted to, something along that line, but we're not, that's not what we tried to do here. But that's interesting to see that. And then you can see the pattern was most uh, apparent through this section here. And I think it's possible that uh, the temperature or maybe the quench rate had something to do with how easily the pattern uh, appears. But I'm gonna take some pictures and you'll be able to see that the pattern is apparent throughout most of the blade. All right guys, did we create woots? Well, like I said earlier, this isn't would never be real woots. Did we create Damascus steel? I'll let you decide. We created a steel with an intrinsic, a pattern that's intrinsic to the steel. So let me know what you think. I'm gonna end the project there. I think that this technique could have potential if you were able to continue to grow the carbides, perhaps the carbide uh, uh, structures that are in there, and then maybe some advanced polishing techniques and I'm also, there's some more questions that I have now because why is the pattern more uh, um, apparent and, and darker in certain areas along that uh, temperature gradient from where it didn't actually harden right there? Was there more carbon uh, in those areas? There's different questions I have. So it uh, was mildly successful and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one.